All right, so we are back with our 90H aquarium a few weeks later. And um, as you can see, we've let it grow for a little while and things have filled in pretty nicely so far. I'm pretty happy with the growth, but it definitely hasn't come without its challenges. And that was to be expected, kind of like we talked about before. There's always going to be ups and downs with these aquariums, especially as you're getting them kind of dialed into their, their equilibrium state. You're going to see some, some loss, some plants that do better than others. And that's exactly what we saw here. Um, especially the, uh, the Nymphaea santarum that we planted down in front. Um, that one kind of melted back pretty much all the way. A few of the leaves are poking back out from the bulbs that are still in there, which um, is about what, what I would expect to be going on. Um, Nymphaeas in general are a pretty thin leafed plant, and so they tend to be pretty delicate. And plants like that oftentimes will shed a lot of leaves when you change environments on them. So, um, so I'd say that's pretty par for the course so far, but yeah, like I said, I'm really happy with how things have been growing in so far. Um, one of the challenges we hit was um, we started getting a little bit of algae growth and uh, we, we had kind of an explosion of bladderwort. Bladderwort's this little uh, uh, utricularia species. It's a, a carnivorous plant, actually. Um, it makes these tiny little strings with little like spherical bladders on it that it uh, catches its prey in. And it's just kind of a little pest plant that'll ride along sometimes. And some of it got caught up in one of these when we were planting and uh, it kind of established itself and took off. So we've had to pull some of that out of there, but no big deal. Nothing a little bit of detail work can't fix. Um, and part of that and the algae popping up was probably because of a mistake that I made in the initial stages. Um, when we were filming one day, I forgot to change the, um, the manual override on the light and CO2. Uh, from the on state back to the timer state. So what ended up happening was for however many days until I realized um, this tank was just getting blasted with light and CO2 24 seven, which the plants really, really did not appreciate. Um, but even with something like that, something that could potentially throw an entire aquascape off if it's not caught, um, we still managed to turn it around. And that's just to say that um, nothing is ever beyond reclamation with these aquascapes and um, and if you're able to recognize and diagnose the problem, you can usually kind of spin things back in the right direction and get them going again. And in the weeks following this initial planting, I did add a few different plants in there to, uh, to sort of tidy up some empty zones and add some variety. Uh, we'll start with the epiphytic plants that I added onto the wood in the aquarium. Um, for the, uh, the larger ones, we used Anubius Nana Golden, which is a nice like lime green variant of the Anubius Nana. It's a, a pretty small one um, starting out at least. It's not like a, a really well established piece, but it should do really well in this environment with the, the kind of lighting and CO2 that we got going on here. So I'm excited for that one to take off. And then we also have some Philippine Java Fern, which is gonna be like your standard leaf shape of Java Fern, but a little bit scaled down, just kind of shorter, a little bit fatter. Um, so I think that'll be really nice for this aquarium. We have a lot of, you know, vertical elements, so it'll be nice to, to put some sort of like shorter, uh, stubbier leaf shapes on the, uh, on the wood, which has such an elongated form. Uh, again, just kind of highlighting some, uh, some contrast that we've installed here on this aquarium. I also used some anchor moss, uh, which is, I believe, a vesicularia species uh, on some of the other parts of the wood as well. That'll do a great job of just sort of like, you know, pillowing out and uh, absorbing light, making sure we don't get too much algae growth on the wood as it, you know, gets beat on by this, uh, this solar RBG above it. I also, over on the left-hand side, added some Hygrophila balsamica. Now this is an incredibly interesting plant. It's one that's really, really finely laced and very dense growing. It's got a really, really thick stem, so it's a, it's a robust plant, that's for sure. Um, what make, what part of what makes it interesting is that um, it's actually a plant that can be toxic to the aquarium inhabitants if you let it grow up out of the water. The, um, the substances that it produces in its sap or whatever you want to call it when you cut the immersed form can actually harm plants, fish, uh, any kind of critters in the tank. So it's kind of a high stakes plant. You got to make sure that you don't let it, let it grow too far, uh, don't let it grow out of the water. But What's nice in this case is that we got a nice tall tank, so we got plenty of time on our hands to worry about that. And it's also not the fastest growing plant in the world, so it's pretty easy to stay on top of it and make sure that it doesn't uh, start growing out and poison your whole tank. 
I also added in this beautiful Ludwigia species white. Uh, this is a really cool one that's relatively new to us in the shop. I got it from a, a friend of ours who visited from Florida and uh, thought that we would find it interesting. Uh, it was an immersed plant to start, so I wasn't really sure what it would look like aquatic, but it has these beautiful, mostly white, but like little hints of a hue of pink in there, kind of leaves on it. Um, sort of similar to Needle Ludwigia, got pretty thin leaves, but, um, but a little bit wider than the, the Needle Ludwigia, so uh, different in that sense, which is kind of cool. But I just kind of thought that the, the center of this aquarium needed something a little bit more uh, focal, I guess, a little bit more of a, a centerpiece. Um, the, the stone did a really great job of that, and I still really love that Fong stone, but I just felt that the, uh, the front field was just a bit too uniform with only the Helanthium quadricostatus, the chain sword in the front there. Um, so I think this will make a really, really great focal point right in the front, um, really draw a lot of attention. It's a, it's a very uh, uncommon, uh, very unique plant. So uh, it should be fun to work with and cultivate. We'll see how it does in here. I have a feeling it's gonna go pretty well. And a few weeks after the initial planting as well, I tested the water and found that we had no more ammonia, we had no nitrite, and we had just a little bit of nitrate in the water, which tells me that this aquarium is effectively cycled and we've got enough bacteria in there to process the fertilizer from the soil as well as the waste from any critters that might move in there. And um, while it's exciting that we have that ability, I don't wanna rush into it because there isn't a whole lot of developed habitat in here yet at the initial set of planting. Um, so we're going to wait a little bit longer to add fish which may be territorial or kind of mess with each other uh, if there's not enough breaks in line of sight or cover. But we are going to add some Amano shrimp. I added about 50 of these guys. Um, they're fantastic little guys, really hardy little cleaner shrimp. Um, what they're going to do is just help me stay on top of the, uh, the algae that's starting in this aquarium which you're always gonna get algae if you have light hitting a non-photosynthetic surface, that's totally normal. But, um, but yeah, I'm gonna get them in, in there pretty early on in the game just to make sure that that algae doesn't take off too far. And, um, and yeah, yeah, they should do really great work for us. They're uh, particularly well disposed to uh, consume filamentous algae like hair algae and blackbeard algae, which is awesome because those ones are kind of hard to find algae eaters for sometimes. So yeah, they'll be working hard for us. Um, they'll be the first inhabitants in here and uh, I'm excited to see what kind of difference they make. Now at this point, I won't say that we're done with all of the planting, but we've got the majority of it done. All of the, uh, all of the growers that are gonna do most of the, the legwork in this aquarium. And that's really important because we're just sort of start starting the process of cycling this aquarium. Um, so this soil is gonna be pushing out a ton of ammonia, which is gonna be pretty hard for the fish to deal with. And the, the plants will absorb some of that and grow with it. But as time goes on over the next few weeks uh, and we have the filter running and everything, uh, that ammonia will start being converted into nitrite and then nitrate by nitrifying bacteria that colonize in the filter and on all the surfaces in the aquarium. So right now we're kind of just playing a waiting game while we wait for the plants to, to grow in and get denser and create habitat for the fish, but also create a more livable environment as the microfauna in this tank develop. The other goal of this aquascape in particular that's a little bit more uh, individually focused is to really work with the height in this aquarium and evoke a feeling of being sort of deep underwater, taking advantage of the fact that we have this beautiful tall viewing window. So by doing lots of tall growing plants, that kind of works to our advantage in that way because they're gonna sort of lean over with the water flow and really emphasize this feeling of like movement and current in the tank, which I'm really excited about. Now, uh, in addition to that, we have some elements that are placed in high contrast with one another. Um, I kind of like to sprinkle in the high contrast elements um, in small groupings so that they're not too jarring, but for example, we have the, uh, the Cryptochorine Cividasanii. That one is a very, very distinct leaf and color from the Ludwigia rubin, but I think it works really well because you get these skinny little blades poking up out of the bright red Ludwigia, kind of, you know, waving in the water flow a little bit. And, um, and yeah, it's just gonna be, you know, a little bit of something that, uh, that breaks the, the uniformity of the Ludwigia. 
And also, it's something that we're not likely to trim very often, so when we trim the Ludwigia, we're still going to have some height and some habitat for the fish over on the side. Um, now similarly with the, uh, the Persicaria that we planted in between the Hygro 53B, that one is pretty similar in texture and leaf shape to the Hygro 53B, but very starkly different in terms of color. So again, that's just going to offer us some variability within a field that would otherwise be pretty uniform and sort of blend the colorful elements to the left and right of that Hygro 53B right into it creating a sense of uniformity through variety. So at this point, uh, our aquarium is definitely well established. It's got a lot of nice plant growth. We've got the nitrogen cycle all finished up. We've got you know no ammonia, no nitrites, just nitrates. Um, and the Amano shrimp that we put in there to help out with the algae, they seem to be doing really well. So at this point, I think it's time to start adding some stock, but I think that's gonna be probably for another video. So we'll cut this one off here, and uh, next time we'll dive into all the different cool fish that we're gonna put in this tank and populate it with, all the different life we're gonna propagate throughout it. And uh, that should be a really fun experience. But for now, I hope you enjoyed watching this process. I uh, hope that our creative process was kind of fun for you to, uh, to observe and, and compare to your own, and hope this brought a little bit of uh, education and tranquility to your life. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Um, and feel free to comment and tell us like what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, we'll be paying attention to that stuff and kind of um, trying to tailor the content to what people are looking for. So. Uh, yeah, let us know how we did and what you thought of everything, and uh, above everything else, enjoy your aquariums and have a good one.